Hi, this is Pea Sox and I am Armen Hihova Kimian, Deputy Secretary General of the Federation of Euro Asian Stock Exchanges. Today I have a guest from Macedonia and from a new member of PEAS, Mr. Ivan Steriev, the CEO of Macedonian Stock Exchange, uh, is with FAS Talks today. Hi, Ivan. Uh, thanks for joining me. Hi. Hi. Hi, Amanuki. Thank you for having me here. Uh, Ivan, I want uh, to congratulate FAS first, then Macedonian Stock Exchange, of becoming a full member of FAS. We had a long uh, history together, FEAS and Macedonian Stock Exchange, and this uh, and, and this small gift is uh, is a reminder of that uh, when Macedonian Stock Exchange joined FEAS back in 1996, and uh, then we had some separation, and now uh, you are back as a full member, which FEAS and FEAS family is really happy with that. And I first congratulate FEAS for that, and then Macedonian Stock Exchange. And my first question is about that. So what do you think? What will the this new, renewed relationship uh, will give to, to your stock exchange? First, thank you for your kind words. Uh, Macedonian Stock Exchange, as you mentioned, was almost among founding members of the Federation. As I remember, we joined within the first year of the operation of the Federation. And we as a member were, although let's say among smaller exchanges, we were quite active in the Federation. We also were a few times organizer of some of the FAST event, including once a general assembly that was held in Ohrit in Macedonia. And uh, we were also member of the supervisory board in one mandate. So uh, until uh, 2016, we were quite, uh, let's say, active in the Federation. As we all know, at that time, Federation was going through some kind of turbulent period and restructuring and everything. And our response and decision at that time was to transform our membership into status of observer. But having in mind our good memories and quite good, uh, uh, let's say, benefits that we had previously from FAS, we were closely uh, watching and monitoring what a kind of this new federation was doing since 2016. And we spotted uh, that the new secretariat is very proactive, offering some new services, accommodating to the new times with social media activity and everything. And having in mind that the stock exchanges in most of the countries, besides few really big uh, economies, are the only market operator in the country. And they are in the peculiar environment in which you could not exchange experience and opinions with other peers because you don't have in the country and other stock exchange. So in a way, stock exchanges, in my opinion, are, let's say, forced to cooperate internationally in order to exchange experience, to get know-how, to compare themselves and their practices, to get maybe some new ideas, to have a business and peer support, to get uh, access to some research, and also to finance all this more easily because you can share the cost if you're part of this kind of association or federation. So as Macedonian Stock Exchange is from Republic of uh, North Macedonia, we are not part of EU. So membership in FESA, in the Federation of European Stock Exchanges, is not automatic one. Also, World Federation of Exchanges is something which is, uh, let's say, a little bit distant from our daily operation and also it's uh, more expensive as a membership. We have some regional cooperation here in Southeast Europe. We have our company and all the routing platform ceiling, but this is not a federation. 
for now. So to conclude, it was uh, having in mind all that I uh, explained in details, it was a logical conclusion from our side that we would like to be again full member of FAS and we are very happy that Federation accepted our uh, request and that we will join the family again. Thank you for your answer, Ivan, uh, and thank you for the trust that you have towards the uh, FEATS. And we will, uh, from from our side, we will uh, do all all possible and all impossible to uh, to 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 give the thing that you think FEATS can be helpful, and we hope to be helpful for for your stock exchange. Yeah, looking forward for that, and we will be also active member i hope thank you uh thank you and uh let's talk about macedonian stock exchange we know each other fast knows you uh but uh, for for our audience please uh, tell us a bit more uh from history from uh, from current state yeah of course uh we started our operations back in 1996, actually the year in which FEAS was also uh, formed. So as a Macedonian stock exchange, we have this history of around 26 years. Last year in the pandemic, we, we celebrated our 25th, uh, let's say, anniversary. As all other exchanges in our region, we had few, let's say, quite distinctive development phases. At the very beginning, of course, our operations were uh, connected with the privatization that was in the 90s, the name of the game here for the economic reforms, but also for the capital market. Then we served as a place for concentrating of this initially quite dispersed ownership structure in the newly created joint stock companies that actually derived from the privatization. Then in the period 2005-2007, we experienced this uh, unprecedented market boom for our circumstances. It was connected with the overall global uh, boom in, in equities market. Afterwards, quite a long period of uh, crisis, low turnovers, uh, let's say main indices going down and down and everything. But in the last, let's say three to four years, again, we had quite good period and quite good results. We are from the very beginning as a Macedonian stock exchange privately owned company. So compared with many exchanges, in the region, but I, I would say in the FAS region as well, we are not connected in the terms of ownership with the government or any other governmental institution. So we are privately owned. Currently, we have around 40 shareholders and our main shareholder, and this is pretty new development, is another stock exchange, another market operator from the region. So our main shareholder or the, the biggest individual one is Zagreb Stock Exchange from Croatia. And together with Zagreb Stock Exchange, few bigger domestic Macedonian banks are also our big shareholders. So the concentration of ownership now is quite, uh, let's say, concentrated. We have around 90 listed companies. Uh, total market capitalization of these listed companies is currently 3.2 billion euros, which is around 26% of the GDP. Main traded companies out of these 90 listed companies are from the sector of banking, pharmacy, uh, construction, uh, petrol distribution, tourism, let's say these are the main, let's say, uh, industries that can be traded through us. We are also place trading venue here in which the government uh, securities, especially government bonds are traded and we have plenty of them listed. But uh, speaking about corporate bonds, only a few of them, especially issued by banks. And now in the following next weeks, we will have 
uh, first uh, bond issued by local municipality. So this is pretty new development. So we hope by the end of the year we will have first uh, public offering of uh, local uh, local municipality bond. We have ten members. Five are banks. Five are private brokerage houses. Historically, number of members, the maximum, the, the, the number, the highest number was 27. So you can see that mm -hmm. now the, the total number of members is quite uh, lower. But we were functioning with seven members as well. So now we are 10 with 10 members. About the turnover, the last five years, let's say, it uh, fluctuated between 100 to 150 million euros annually again having in mind the size of the economy and generally uh, the, the the size of all markets in the region this is let's say quite okay from our perspective last year 2021 was the best year in terms of turnover in last decade this year the turnover is uh, uh, decreased but again, one has to have into consideration that the last year was the best one in the decade. So this year is quite okay, but the trend is not so positive. And maybe the last uh, feature that I think it's important to share with you is that we are mainly market driven by domestic investors, quite high percentage of retail investors, 50 to 60. Uh, on the demand side are Macedonian physical persons and in the same way in uh, in the same time this is our main challenge how to attract uh, foreign portfolio investors and again uh, so, uh, membership in this kind of association probably could help us in that target too uh, this was a really comprehensive answer and um... It is visible that uh, Macedonia Stock Exchange is growing uh, through the 26 years. And uh, I wish good luck with your new products and uh, with, with the municipal bonds. Uh, this can be a really good uh, case study to share with FAS members as well, because uh, not all our members had municipal bonds. And uh, it will be good to know from your experience. Uh, about this and uh, yeah this will be maybe so, some of the topic of uh, some, our discussion within FEAS. Thanks for uh, sharing this information. Uh, really interesting. And coming back to your uh, development and the things that you are developing in your country, uh, we had an interview, uh, we had a FEAS talk uh, with you in 2020, like during the pandemic, and uh, back back then, you mentioned that you are working on corporate governance code, and you you are going to uh, uh, to to launch it and to pass the code finally in in the next year, which will would be twenty twenty one. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, what updates are there with corporate governance codes uh, in, in your country? Yeah, you you remember correctly. We announced that during this previous interview and what is the current situation uh, actually the new corporate governance code was completed as planned and adopted by our, our board of directors in 2021 and we are really proud it, 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 it is quite solid and good new code adjusted to our reality uh, one of the aims were to modernize the old code, but also to have in mind that we don't have to end up with very good code on paper, but not, let's say, uh, uh, accommodated to the needs and to the uh, practices in our corporate sector. Uh, it is based, of course, on the principle of comply or explain. And But we realized in the public... Uh, consultation that we had with our companies that although it's comply or explain, they are quite aware that this is also the issue uh, for the uh, uh, image of the companies, the reputational issue. 
And actually, the companies asked for a slight prolongation for uh, uh, entering into a force of the new corporate governance code. So we prolonged that for one year. And actually, it will start in January, one month from now. Uh, first, uh, actually, companies, our, our uh, assessment was that they want their first reporting to be without so many explains. So they need mm -hmm. one more year to adjust part of their operations, part of their internal acts, and to start reporting at, 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 at a higher level in a way. And having in mind that the codes of, for corporate governance are part of this so-called soft wall, if you would like to be successful, you should not be so pushy. So we did some kind of compromise and prolonged that for one year. In the meantime, we uh, managed to get another technical assistance from EBRD, European Bank for Reconstruction Development, actually helped us with the corporate governance code as well. And with them, we also developed uh, environmental social governance guideline for our listed companies, because the corporate governance code, there is one separate special chapter on these sustainability issues. And now the ESG guideline will help our companies to comply with that part of the code as well. So as we are approaching to 2023, we think that we created a quite good framework with both the, the new code and the ESG guideline, which will contribute for increasing the quality of reporting on the supply side of the market, meaning our listed company. So this is actually the current situation. Uh, thank you. Uh, again, an important topic also within FAIRS. Uh, we had a discussion with our members and our members are always requesting uh, to, to know uh, about our members, how they are uh, managing ESG guidelines and how they are managing all the sustainability path uh, from their side. And it will also be a, a good uh, example for, for our members and for, for our community. We will wait for the news uh, from, from you for next year to, to understand how it is working and how uh, you are experiencing the, the, the process. Yeah. Uh, Let's get back to technologies. So you, uh, your stock exchange is a technology provider and vendor for the market. And um, I would like to know uh, in terms of technology, what are your immediate challenges right now? And, and, and opportunities, of course. Yeah, we are quite involved in IT aspects of the operation of the whole market here. We are, uh, let's say, uh, running and maintaining our main trading system, then uh, back office system of our members, then their application for trading via internet, so-called e-trader here. Then we are managing special platform for this disclosure of listed companies. We have joint IT center with our central depository, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. About you, you ask about the challenges. Let's say I will I will identify two major in our uh, opinion. First, as we are not IT company, we are the market operator. We are doing everything that I uh, mentioned in order to support the market, the market participant, and development of the market. So we are not so profitable compared mm -hmm. with classical IT companies, and that means that on the local. IT labor market, we are not very, let's say, competitive in at attracting and maintaining good IT people. So this is big challenge for us, how to maintain all this that we are doing as IT function, but also to find a way how to have good IT people with us. And believe me, it's very, very challenging. The second major challenge which actually was stressed this year is some kind of price increases 
in in uh, acquiring and replacing the hardware, uh, upgrading some of the technologies because you know with all this supply chain disruption, inflation, mm -hmm. and strong dollar or stronger dollar, some of the plans for investing into our IT part of operation was completely, let's say, changed throughout the year. So this is actually the second big challenge. However, we are determined to 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 continue in this uh, area. We are considering maybe setting up a separate IT company together with the uh, central depository, uh, and we will see. But these are the challenges. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the, the challenges that are also coming from the world, all the situation in, in the whole yeah, world. Perfect. And yeah, they're connected. And uh, I wish you good luck also here because I, I understand coming from the stock exchange also my uh, previous, uh, from my pre previous experience, I do understand how it is difficult to, to operate also the IT part of the stock exchange and good luck <laughs> good luck and uh, Fias is here Fias is here to help you with a, with anything you need there uh, please uh, refer to us we will we will try to, to to help also together with our members and my very last question uh, what to expect from Macedonia stock exchange in the future yeah always last question in this kind of interviews but the crucial one mm -hmm. as, I, as i mentioned we had few good years in a row from the point of view of turnover that means the, the revenues and everything but on the other hand this year is not so good as all other trading places and trading venues we are trying and our investors and members and everybody uh, trying to accommodate how to uh, operate in this new environment with the obviously higher inflation and very big uh, uh, volatility of the dynamics of the prices and everything so for the next period <clears throat> we are focused in few areas we would like to intensify again the promoting public offerings and IPOs, market financing to the companies here, maybe trying to set up a kind of more structured pre-listing program for our companies, because we are mainly still trading old companies that were privatized and became corporations years ago or decades ago. So no really new IPOs. So this is the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. We were doing this throughout all these years, but we realized that this kind of activity should be should be done over and over again, because maybe some of the activities were done by exchanges, not only us, but all other similar exchanges <clears throat> too early because the society, mm -hmm. the economy, the entrepreneurs, they're maturing. And probably we should repeat and repeat our story and possibilities that our markets are, let's say, offering to, to the entrepreneurs and companies. Then, as a second activity, we are considering and we started working to find a kind of mechanism how maybe to introduce some foreign securities at our market. Again, it's a, uh, uh, we are not part of EU, unfortunately, for EU members and EU exchanges, this is quite easy now with this single passporting and everything. Mm -hmm. In our case, we are considering this solution that European Union countries and markets are uh, using and trying to accommodate that to our legislation, which is not fully compliant. We are adjusting the legislation and we think we can we can maybe offer some foreign securities to be traded to our market, which will mean new, uh, let's say, instrument on a supply side, because definitely our main problem and challenge is on the supply side. Demand side is, again, for our size, quite, quite okay. And all, both of these priorities uh, will be supported with the, let's say, this acquisitions that were 
made throughout the year. As I mentioned, Zagreb Stock Exchange is now our biggest single shareholder. So we hope that uh, people from Zagreb Stock Exchange now as our partial owners will help us with, uh, let's say, either with uh, exporting some know-how or helping us to accommodate the legislation because they did that process with, with EU directives, etc., etc. And also the second uh, important thing is that we as a stock exchange also became this year the biggest individual shareholder in the central securities depositor. Mm -hmm. So now the Macedonian Stock Exchange owns 20% of the depository. I'm serving as a board member recently there. And now it's quite more easier when we have some idea for the project to get support from the from the depository as well. So these are in 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 uh, brief the main priorities and the main let's say the reasons why we are optimistic that we will achieve part of the priorities. We at first are also very optimistic on on your development of the Macedonian stock exchange and Macedonian uh, capital market in general. Uh, thank you, Ivan, for, for your thoughts, for the important information that you shared with us and hope to see you soon. Thank you for the invitation for this interview. And once again, thank you for uh, uh, to all current uh, FAST members to for the support and accepting us to be again part of the Federation. Thank you.